As seen in the previous episode, neither of the two old-school snake oils were able to resolve the lifter tick. Still tapping away? Time to give something new a shot. You all know the drill. Call me a <coughs> in the comments if you want, but I'm keeping the hot oil off of me and trying not to drop the drain plug at the same time. Yoink. Still a little bit warm, but the filter cools off a little bit faster than the sump. Still dripping a little one lunch break later, but the majority of what's going to drain is already drained out. Calibrated arm and gauge, click. Let's see what this stuff is all about. It smells similar to other Valvoline synthetic oil. Before anyone gets on my case for not lubricating the gasket. There we go. Bottomed out. Three quarter turn. Got the info on the filter. I did include that it's filter number one since I might be running multiple filters during this oil change without dumping the oil itself. Starting with the big jug as usual, since this engine does take more than the five quarts here, probably gonna end up adding somewhere between six and seven. This is going to be an interesting test. There's not really sludge in this engine, but it does have the kind of varnish and hard carbon like what will develop in Ringlands. This oil is designed to attack those kinds of deposits, so I'm hoping it can do the same thing with whatever is jamming up that stubborn lifter. Big jug is just about finished draining. Oil is so clear as to be almost invisible on the dipstick. Car is still up in the air, so this isn't super accurate. But I see the oil level right between the first and second X here. Certainly enough to safely start. Just like last time, yell if you see any leaks. Here we go. We got oil pressure. I don't see any leaks. That's a good sign. Oh, that is tough to see with how clear it is. Level is between the lowest X and the minimum mark, which means this will take about a quart and a half to get it up to the max mark. Start with the 20 ounces left over from pre-filling the filter. Give that a while to drain. Let's see where we're at now. Okay, as expected, between a third and halfway up. Put in about half of this bottle. Nailed it. Just right. Oil is now a whisker below the max mark. Gonna call that good. As long as I know where it started, I can figure out if I'm using any oil. Not that I expect to use much at all. Used all but about 10 ounces of the seven quarts I bought. There's the first sample. Here we are, just over 2,000 miles on the first round of Restore and Protect. The lifter noise is still here. But I kind of expected I'm in here for the long haul because of the nature of the hard carbon and varnish in this engine. I got a longer trip coming up in a couple weeks as of this recording, so figure it's time to pull the filter, cut it open, and take a sample. Send that off to get analyzed. Just gonna give it a few minutes to cool down, and I'll come back to it. Picked up this little vacuum pump for pulling a sample without having to drain any of the oil manually. Comes with a length of flexible tubing to feed down the dipstick tube, because I don't know where this tubing originated. I'm gonna give it a blast out with the MAF sensor cleaner. This stuff says it's plastic safe, so it should dislodge any oils or residues in here without eating the plastic. A little bit through there. Put the compressed gas duster in as well behind it. And for good measure, I'll let it bake in the sun for a few minutes. Good time to pull the blot sample for 2,000 miles as well. There we go. I'll come back to this later when the blot spreads out. Now, in theory, operating this pump should be pretty simple. Removo the dipstick. 
and put it aside somewhere safe. Then feed the sample tube down the dipstick tube into the sump. That's the bottom. I'll pull up a couple inches so I'm not getting any layer from the bottom of the sump. Insert the tube far enough that it drops the oil into the bottle and not the body of the pump. Tighten this here collar, which should clamp on the tube and make a seal. Pull a little bit of vacuum. Hey, there we go. I just wanted to pull some air. And it actually hit the bottom and curled over. Oil is nice and hot, so it's flowing fast. There, broke the vacuum. I do not want to fill the pump with dirty oil. Let that gravity drain just a little. Make sure it's not going to just pee everywhere. So this is going to be a test of just because the oil is dark, does that mean it really needs changing? So you're looking at a little bit in the bottle, that well, looks pretty darn dark. Can extract the tube. Still being careful because it has oil on it and it's hot. And before anything stupid can happen, get the dipstick back in and cover up the hole. I'm going to prep the new filter. Almost exactly two months later, previous filter is put on on April 10th. It's been 2,001 miles since I put the oil in, bringing us to 258,566. Got about 10 ounces left in this bottle. Filter should take most of that. Any leftover is going to go in the sump because obviously you're going to lose some when I take the old filter down. Just like that, took the whole bottle and there's still some room in there. But this will compensate for the majority of the oil lost with the filter change. Yes, I'm lubricating the gasket before anyone calls me out on that. Car is lifted and secured with chocks and jack stands. Doing the wiggle test, as always. Not going anywhere. Meanwhile, filter's got a chance to cool. It is now at a tolerable temperature, not frying temperature. Nice and easy with this wrench. Yeah, there it goes. Give that a chance to drain so it's not getting on me as much. warm but not gonna kill me a little bit will dribble out but that's just what's in the passages it's not really gonna siphon anybody dry here mending surface is clean all the better to grab this new filter and get that in place so the question will be what direction are my Note's going to point once the filter is all the way tightened. Not bad. That should be there. You all know the drill. Holler if you see a leak. There's oil pressure. Looks good to me. Time to find out what is behind filter number one. Okay, what do we got in here? Got a few little specks in here, but nothing too crazy. Anti-drain back valve, looks like it's in good shape. Not seeing it all full of grit on the outside here, like what happened with the first round of Marvel Mystery Oil. That was 2,300 miles, so not a whole lot more than this interval. Let me get a cutting implement, get some of these pleats out, take a closer look in the valleys. Sharp knife makes a whole lot of difference. And yes, it has caught some material. The oil is pretty dark and that's going to interfere with determining what is carbon particles and what is just filter pleat dark with oil absorbed into it. I'm gonna wrap it up in a rag here. I don't have a super powerful vise, but I can smush it with a few clamps give that oil a chance to wick out into the paper towel. Hopefully that'll clear up the pleats a little bit and give a better look at what it caught. There, now the filter media is lighter in color. And it's caught a bunch of little carbon bits. Uh, it's like a, a varnish flake or something. 
It's entirely possible that some bits that were suspended in some of the varnish were now released and are getting caught in the filter. Keep an eye on it and we'll see what the oil report says. Taking a look under the oil cap here, still got those patchy bits of varnish up here. I could swear it looks a tiny bit cleaner, but I'll bring up the pictures side by side. A couple weeks for me, instant for the viewers, here is the oil report from the sample I pulled. Not seeing anything concerning at our end, just a 1 ppm increase in aluminum after the longer run, no other changes in the wear metals, and they're very low for the mileage on the oil. Viscosity was a bit low, but there's no measurable fuel, so it could be normal for the engine. Running another 2,000 miles or so shouldn't be an issue. TBN still shows plenty of active additive. Tiny bit more aluminum, same on the iron, pretty much same on the copper, no lead tin, Molly's an additive, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, barium, those are also going to be additives. So these will change based on the oil formulation, same with Molly. Again, everything looks pretty good. 2,000 miles makes the math a little bit easier or more sensible in extrapolating out to 5,000 miles. And these wear numbers now look in range for what this engine would expect, even quite a bit lower in some cases, especially in terms of the iron. But these wear numbers are not necessarily linear. They'll change a little bit. The wear rate will change based on the oil, the conditions, blah, blah, blah. Could see either a jump or a slowing in the wear rate as the oil interval progresses. Everything looks right on the money, except for the viscosity shearing out of grade. Then again, could be normal for this engine. I'm on stock boost, stock tune. I'm not racing it. It's not running super hot. I'm not running at high RPM. So there's nothing that would on paper suggest that it would be hard on the oil. So we'll just keep an eye on it. No fuel, no antifreeze. Insolubles, very low, which reinforces the fact that that filter was nowhere near plugged and it was properly catching the large particles while the Restore and Protect is properly dissolving anything else and keeping it suspended. TBN of 3.9. If I can find one, I'll pull up a virgin oil sample of the 5W30 Restore and Protect to see what the TBN would start at, but that's plenty of additive. As long as it's more than two or so, should be able to keep running it. And this is another thing that will not necessarily be linear as the interval progresses. So we'll just keep an eye on it. Pretty sure that 5,000 miles should be easy enough to get through. Another thing I was able to do in the couple weeks waiting for the oil report was get another couple blot samples here. I went on a road trip of around 600 miles. Here's where I pulled the sample and changed the filter. So I also got a 2250 and a 2500 mile sample. Oil looks dark in any measurable quantity, but putting the drops in the paper shows that it's not full of soot, it's not really turned black. You can see the soot ring gradually getting more pronounced, but it's not overloaded, and the insolubles test confirms that. I'll keep sampling every 250 miles until I reach 5,000, at which point I'll change the oil, cut open the filter, this point is looking like I can get away with just one filter per interval and 5,000 mile intervals. Sampling, of course, and keeping an eye on it if the noise gets worse. Oil consumption has been negligible over the 2,500 miles that I've tested it so far. In fact, the only reason why the level is here at around the third X from the top instead of right where I left it is because I lost maybe 20 ounces when I dropped the filter and I only had 10 ounces of fresh makeup oil to add. Simply changing the filter midway through the interval has been the biggest loss of oil for this engine. Thus the experiment continues, up until the point that the oil analysis gives me a compelling reason why I need to tear down the engine immediately to avoid a catastrophic failure, I'll keep running Restore and Protect to the end of this interval, then a second, third, even a fourth interval, See what it can do. Will it clean up the varnish under the oil fill cap? Will it solve the lifter tapping? Have to wait and see. In the meantime, here's some more videos in case you want to see some more garage shenanigans. Until next time.